Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University, and today I have another special guest on the channel. I've got the one and only Amir Rosick here from Block Geeks to talk about uh, blockchain development and you know why you should be getting into the blockchain space and you know how he can help with that and what he's working on at Block Geeks. So I'm a very big fan of uh, Amir's personal channel and Block Geeks as an educational resource. So I'm extra excited to have Amir on today. So Amir, welcome. Thanks, Gregory. How are you doing, man? I'm, I'm doing great. Um, so before I kind of start bombarding you with questions, Amir, um, do you want to kind of just give your elevator pitch for what you're working on in the blockchain space and uh, maybe what you're working on at Block Geeks and, and how you can help developers and why they should join? Sure. I've been, uh, keep it super short, I've been in the blockchain crypto space for about four and a half five years give or take um so i'm not a newbie just coming around in the last year or so <laughs> totally uh yeah uh so basically i'm the co-founder of block geeks with dimitri buterin which is vitalik buterin's father and uh, we focus on training blockchain developers so we are an online education platform that creates online SDK learning uh, curriculum for developers. And we're agnostic, so we don't focus on one thing, we focus on everything. So we have Bitcoin coding, we have Ethereum coding, we're gonna have Cosmos, Aeon, Rootstock, EOS, you name it. And basically we help, whether that is a junior developer or senior developer, onboard their skill set for coding blockchain, whether that is architectural slash engineering a blockchain, or whether that is smart contract uh, coding on top of the blockchain, and we then help them actually earn crypto on the back end with our bounty board. So we have a platform called bounty1.io, which we work with our partners, and basically the our students that learn to code blockchain, they can either work directly with our partners, or they can work as freelancers and actually earn the token slash cryptos that they like. Awesome. That sounds like a very exciting uh, system that you all have built there. So can you comment maybe a little bit on what you're seeing happening uh, in the developer market in blockchain and maybe how that compares to other, uh, other markets that are, aren't blockchain related? Uh, like any new technology, there's hype, right? So people sure. are trying to figure out what's what and it takes time and uh, it, well, it takes time to figure out what's going to be here for the next couple of years. The space moves so fast. There's a joke, like every month is like equivalent to almost like six months in regular time. It's like a year in blockchain. It's like years and years in regular tech space or other industries. Right. That be, that being said right now, there's a, the biggest issue is obviously a shortage, of, a shortage of talent. Like if we're looking at people who really understand you know, the full stack variations of blockchain, so from the architectural design of a system to securities, et cetera, maybe there's a couple of hundred globally speaking, and people who really understand crypto economics or token economics and security models, there may be like 20, 30 people, uh, and the rest are just front end app developers. So the biggest issue is like we need talent. And uh, these big open source projects, whether that is Bitcoin, Ethereum, NEO, EOS, Cosmos, Aeon, you name it, the name of the game is not money because for the first time ever, we have too much money. The liquidity of money is everywhere. People are, for God's sakes, making ERC-20 tokens and printing money like the central, uh, central banks that they claim to be against. And so that being said, um, the question is you as a you as a platform or you as a new startup in the cryptocurrency space, what are you doing to attract the best talent to work on your platforms? Right, totally. So, um, you know, if you were to uh, kind of give, you know, maybe one little tidbit of advice for a developer who's trying to get into the blockchain space, maybe out of everything that you said, what would be maybe, maybe the most important thing? Well, I would say a couple of things. There's a lot of, I'm a firm believer in honesty and the good developers that I know, their work speaks for themselves. And like any developer, you like to show off your GitHub, you like to maybe spend some time on Stack Exchange, you like to build cool shit, right? As opposed to saying, well, I took a weekend course or I took this thing, so here's my certification. So I think right now in the space, there's a lot of people who are diving in and trying to buy their way in as a developer, meaning they're looking for this piece of paper on the wall as a certificate. Sure. Uh, and there's companies out there giving out 48 hours or you know 72 hour certificates on how to code Solidity or how to code C++ on Bitcoin, which is fucking crazy considering what the hell, you can't even learn JavaScript in 48 hours, might as well Solidity. <laughs> Uh, so more or less is like um, pick a pick a stack that you like, whether that is you want to code on Bitcoin, C++, 
second layer, third layer technology, whether you want to do some smart contract development on Ethereum with Solidity, or you want to work with some Haskell, or you want to work with Wasm on EOS, whatever it may be, and start actually coding, whether that is going on Block Geeks, learning about it there, but get your hands dirty and actually start building some applications, and that's the best way to kind of get involved. Awesome. So maybe what do you think uh, the future of this space is on a on a maybe relatively short timeline, maybe the next couple of years? I mean, you commented on uh, how it's moving so fast and, you know, yeah. months are looking like smaller time frames in this space compared to another space. Um, yeah, what do, you, what do you think we're looking at down the road? I think we're going to have the, the same cycle that we've seen with the Gardener hype cycle. And I think we're going through hype right now. We don't have it. Well, one, I actually believe in the short term, most dApps are garbage. There's no purpose for dApps. They don't actually create a better business model, at least in the short term. And I'm not talking about the long term. Um, we are not even close to scalability, even though there's platforms are promise it. It's not launched. It's not been out in the wild. People haven't been building on it. People haven't put billions of billions of dollars on it. Uh, there's not millions of users. Like if you actually think about it, what DAP has millions of users on a day-to-day -day basis? The only one that has and it's been around for a while, but there's issues with this Steemit, right? It's own blockchain. I think similar to like BitShares uh, system. And so for me, it's like, don't be cognizant of the fact that we're super early. We're like pre-Netscape era, give or take. Some people like to make comparisons. And be cognizant of that fact and be aware that we're a while away from actually seeing true applications of this technology. And so, like any industry, whether that is the AI industry, whether that is the e-commerce industry, which I, which I came from before this, is think about the long-term play. You know, what do you like to focus on? What do you care about? Where's your skill set? And play the long game. Awesome. So, you know, you mentioned... Um maybe being in e-commerce before. So what, what was your uh, what was your background before blockchain and what caused you to make the switch? Yeah, I've been building businesses since I was 15. I got kicked out of high school in grade nine. So <laughs> uh, before this, I had a, my e-commerce business was a special underwear company that protected you from radiation called Reparo. We had that in China. So we sold it to a Chinese market. Um, yeah, I've been building online businesses for a decade. Uh, so for me, I come from Toronto. Toronto has a big bit. Bitcoin community, we have Peter Todd over here, obviously Vitalik, we have Cosmos, we have Aeon, we have a massive blockchain community over here. And for me, it wasn't actually the technology that got me gravitated, or it wasn't a technology that was a gravitas that made me go into the space, more or less it was a community, you know, more, because for me, I don't like labels, but the closest label I can define myself as is a libertarian. And a lot of the crypto space has more or less libertarian values. And for me, you know, some people call me a crypto anarchist. I'm not per se a crypto anarchist. I just like certain values of each different camp. Uh, so it was a culture more or less that was the biggest draw for me as opposed to technology. Awesome. So uh, maybe part of that culture, what, what was the actual impetus for creating Block Geeks then? My own problems. Awesome. Right. No one had proper content online. I come from a background of creating content marketing. And then when we started looking into the dev community, I realized no one was actually properly training. Like Block Geeks isn't like Udemy or any of these other platforms. We legitimately have in-house teachers who are blockchain developers who create like top fucking notch quality content. We have, you know, videographers, we have movie studios. Like we try to create the highest quality experience possible. Very cool. So yeah, it sounds like you guys are pretty pretty busy over there. So what does your kind of day in day out involvement look like with that process? I like to build my companies uh, horizontally speaking. Uh, that's also a lot of influence from Dimitri. Uh, so if you guys aren't familiar with horizontal business model, that's uh, kind of like teal holacracy. And so traditional business, you have managers, you have a hierarchical org where you have CEO, then CMO, then project manager, more or less we're horizontal where everybody has a say in everything. And so for me, I'm not really involved on day-to-day -day processes, more or less thinking big term, thinking, I would say strategy. And so there's a saying, you shouldn't be working in your business, you should be working on your business. Awesome. That sounds like a great, uh, great spot to be in. So what, uh, you know, where, that being said, you know, where, where do you want Block Geeks to head? You're talking about making the best premium content. Um, if, you, if you're already doing that, what's kind of the next step for you all? 
expanding that content, making a better learning experience for our students, gamifying our platform a little bit better, uh, giving them more opportunity to, uh, say, present themselves as amazing developers. That's why we launched BountyOne.io. So our students, after they learn their skill set, whether that is Ethereum, EOS, Cosmos, or Aeon, then they can go over to Bounty One, build up their reputation, build up their GitHub, whether earn tokens, uh, whether become a freelancer, or we can help them with our job placement, get a job in some of these startups. It's continue getting more talent in the space. Yeah, that sounds like a full, uh, you know, uh, comprehensive solution for that. That's very awesome. Is there any like one particular uh, piece of that equation that you're most proud of, or some feature of Block Geeks that you really like to hang your hat on? It's proud of my team. You know, like yeah. at the end of the day, I'm not really proud of like this, for me. It's like, oh, I, I have this revenue. I have this, yeah, whatever. You know, it's superficial numbers for me. I'm proud of the fact that we have a great culture, great community. People are happy to come to work. Uh, and we're building something that's fucking awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Is there uh, anything kind of exciting on the roadmap for Block Geeks in 2018 that you'd like to share with the people watching? Just big partnerships. We're doing partnership with Rootstock, with EOS, um, you name it. The big, the big players in the space, we're doing massive partnerships with them. Awesome. That's very exciting. So we'll uh, be sure to stay tuned for those as they come out. <laughs> yeah. The uh, so just for clarification, um, you know, where can we find Block Geeks online? Literally, BlockGeeks.com. Cool. And is there any other uh, social media that we can yeah, follow? Yeah, we have a massive YouTube following too. So if you, you know, for the most part, we release uh, almost every two three days content on YouTube. Uh, pretty big Twitter following. Same with Facebook. So it's B L O C K Geeks. Very cool. Maybe any uh, personal social media that people can follow you on to stay up to date just, with what's happening. Just my name. If they, you know, I'm on Twitter quite frequently, and uh, YouTube. But mind you, my YouTube channel is full of most crazy stuff. It's not just I do very little crypto, more or less like most random stuff possible. <laughs> awesome, could be an exciting channel to watch for people then. Well, very cool, Amir. Uh, well, I've enjoyed our chat thoroughly today. Um, that's kind of brings me to the list of the questions that I had off the top of my head. Um, before we wrap up here, is there anything else that you can think of that you'd like for the folks at home to know? Yeah, build cool shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can get behind that 100%. Well, very cool. Well, again, Amir, uh, thanks so much for coming on to the channel today. Everybody, be sure to check out Block Geeks. Um, it's a, I'm a big fan of that resource, have been for a long time. Um, also, be sure to check out Amir's personal channel and social media and all that kind of stuff. Um, so Amir, thanks again. I uh, hope to have you an, another time maybe when something comes, comes out. Um, sure. so be sure to subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this where I'm talking to people who are kind of building in the, the Ethereum space. Uh, and until then, thanks for watching DAP University.